a coffee and then we're going to go over and speak to Grace, who's one of our scrum masters here in Northwestern Germany, Nuremberg. This is the strangest looking coffee I've ever had. Have a look at this, is this normal? <laughs> Hey, Grace. How are you? I've got a little microphone for you. Should I I've got one. Yeah, I've okay. got one here. So, Grace, thank you for joining me for breakfast and for a, for a coffee. Sure. Um, I'm just hoping you could tell the audience a little bit, maybe introduce yourself, um, who you are, what you do here at GFK, and how long you've been with us. So, my name is Grace. I am a Scrum Master at GFK in the Media Measurement Group. I've been here since last year, middle of September, so it's about half a year now. And was there anything else? Mm -mm. No, that was it. So. <laughs> That's all good. So, Grace, what is a Scrum Master? What, what do you actually do and why do you enjoy your job? Um, so I like to say as a Scrum Master, I actually don't do anything really in terms of uh, the work. So the data science work, the engineering work that happens. I'm more of someone who, who uh, stands on the side and I support the teams in um, living basically agile values. And we in Media Measurement practice um, the Scout Agile Framework, SAFE. Uh, we have about 13 teams and so this is like um, Scrum to another level. So it, there are challenges there, but it's also really fun. So um, there's a lot to do, um, a lot going on, and you get to meet a lot of people. <laughs> that's what GFK is all going about. On today. There is a lot going on today. Yeah. So why is Agile important to GFK, and why is Scrum important? It's it's the way to do things, and I also am someone as a Scrum master who obviously believes in this way of working. Um, I think Agile is nothing new. Scrum is nothing new, um, but what we've learned over the past decade or so is that it's not that easy to implement. It's easy to understand, but it's hard to actually do. Agile talks about having um, cross-functional teams, so teams with different skill sets, so who know different things, um, that self-organize and work together. And this sounds really great, but compared to the old model where it's, there's someone in charge, there's someone planning the whole project, there's someone assigning tasks, it's a lot more free. And so, um, you know, if you have a group of people and you say, go, go for it, they'll be like, well, what's going to happen now? Like, who's doing what? And, and so there's always this period in the beginning of sort of, okay, we don't know how to do this. And so this is where the Scrum Master comes in and says, reminds them, okay, um, this is what it's all about. This is why we're doing this. And they try to help them find solutions for any of the problems they have. I think it's key at GFK because we're going through this transformation now to become more modern, to become in general more agile. And essentially agile just means we are reacting to change better and we're, um, building solutions that we believe in. So we're not just doing what we're told to do, but the teams are empowered to make decisions and they're empowered to build products that they believe in, that they, they, they build quality. They call it built-in quality. You can do that the best by empowering the teams with the right information, with the right priorities, so that they can make the best decisions. 100%. It sounds like we're using uh, test-driven development there and, and as you say, um, encompassing testing into a whole dev life cycle. What I wonder, um, Grace, as a Scrum Master coming into GFK, as you say, we're going through change. Yeah. Agile's fairly, not new here, but it's definitely an evolving process. It's still in the process. early phases, yeah. It's not all the same in all the departments. 100%. So as a Scrum Master, that probably gives you unique challenges compared to other environments. Mm -hmm. What made you choose GFK and, and, you know, take on this project? I previously was a product owner. Okay. Um, so I'm familiar with Agile, but I had a different role in the whole setup. And um, after having a couple interview rounds, um, the option was proposed to me and I, I was actually pretty impressed that in the interview process they sort of said, well, you, you're here for a product owner role, but uh, it sounds like you're really pretty enthusiastic about the Agile um, stuff and would you also consider a Scrum Master role because we're looking for that and I just, you know, at that moment said, maybe this is the right thing for me, you know. People that I met were really great, so I have great colleagues, I have great people above and below and around me and Actually, no one's really below me, I have to say, <laughs> they're around me. <laughs> the agile um, structure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but, I mean, I, I really have nice colleagues, and that makes a big difference. GFK has traditionally been a quite a monolithic organisation, quite a large organisation, as you say, with a bit of a hierarchical structure. Um, I imagine that you're you know, facing maybe the certain barriers you've had to remove already or barriers you're working to remove. Is there anything that stands out or maybe something you're really proud of that you've, you've influenced or changed? I am in the role to um, 
to to support change. So it is my role to support the whole process. And so when I bring in ideas or I reach out to people, um, I can make uh, some waves, right? So it's not just um, well, you're just a you know new employee and you can't do anything. So I've actually been. I've had the experience that people have been really receptive to any ideas I've had. Um, the biggest challenge in the big company, I feel like, and this is maybe not just GFK, but a lot of companies, is knowing who to go to for what. This has been something that's always a challenge. Um, but what I what I like, especially about our group, is we're using Slack as a standard tool for communication, and everyone in the uh, technology and data group is in there. So um, it's really easy to reach out to people, and for the most part, people are pretty responsive. I think one of the biggest things that was pretty cool, part of the agile process is not just having the teams understand agile and do that, but also having the business owners, the product managers, the customers understand that, because if they are doing things in the old way and they have you know, set deadlines and they have set scopes and they want to have set costs, that's really not agile. We had, you know, with one customer, sort of these discussion rounds because um, we came into this with pre-existing contracts, pre-existing sort of timelines and mm -hmm. things like that. And, you know, this is, you know, as a scrum master, I'm like, red flag, this is not really agile. This is creating pressure for the team. Um, they're trying to meet these deadlines. And at the same time, we're doing this whole safe planning, which involves, you know, 12, 13 teams coming together every two, three months for two to three days. Okay. We're planning a bunch of things and we're committing to things in our, in our sprints, in our two-week uh, iterations. And then at the same time, the team has these alternative priorities, which is this customer expects this by this time, and this isn't always fit together. That We have to integrate this process better. And so we start talking to this customer more about how we're working and whether or not we can make some changes to align align things better with our process in terms of having, for instance, um, feedback meetings not every week, which is pretty intense right? yeah, for one course. customer, but try to align that with our cycle with sprints, for their two okay. weeks. Sprints. So that's one idea. You know this, we cannot promise that something's been done by a certain time. Historically, it's always been late, right? But what we can do is, because we have Scrum, we have our velocity, so we know how much uh, work approximately the team can, can um, achieve in terms of complexity. Um, and we can say, you know, this is the work that you guys want us to do we're gonna try to you know estimate what that work is in terms of complexity and then we're gonna base on our historical values tell you when we think with the best you know knowledge this could be done okay and we're gonna keep you in the loop of what's happening so that you know we're always doing something relevant and the highest priority sounds like a really client-centric focused approach exactly. actually which i think is brilliant especially when you're exactly. creating products for them they have a very varied bunch of skill sets data science machine learning have yep. more focus here than maybe in other environments how have you personally found uh, adjusting to these different skill sets these different mm. types of people so data science is new for me um, I worked previously with uh, engineers and um, DevOps. Well, you could call it DevOps, but um, <laughs> um, SREs, you know, things or, like this. Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, you know, I'm in terms of the people, they're great. So um, the people are really smart. Um, they know what they're doing. They're really dedicated. Um, I think the biggest challenge for Agile, for, for data science people, is that uh, we had a lot of discussions around this. Their work is oftentimes hard to estimate. Um, it's very complex. They don't know when exactly they'll find the right model for the problem that they're solving. Um, and this is something that uh, we've always talked about is more research and less pract so less practical type of work with like you know, software development. We need to slice things down. We need to make sure that we are doing pieces of work which we still think are doable in a sprint. I feel like um, we're always getting better at this. It's a learning process um, and that's the point. You know, the thing about Agile is you never stay standing. You continue to um, evolve and you continue to improve things. Um, after each, you know, sprint, reflect on what's happened, learn from your estimations, learn from how much work it took, learn about how could we split the work differently? Is there a way to split it differently than we previously have thought where we can still achieve the result? It may not be the final result. I mean, these are scientists, it's not perfect, but it's something that gets you further. How does the environment around support you? I'm talking about the office space, maybe you've got breakout rooms, or maybe there's certain toolings that you can use, like Slack, which you mentioned earlier. My teams are um, uh, distributed, so I sit in Feuerheimer Straße, for instance, but I'm oftentimes in Bamberger Straße, and part of my team is, is really uh, situated and based in Bamberger Straße. Um, so I get to see the different buildings and how it's evolved. Feuerheimer is still pretty traditional in terms 
terms of the uh, office space, but Bamberger, you see the things they've tried out now with the focus rooms for, um, you know, um, individual work or maybe uh, meetings with two people, with the um, meeting rooms with different sizes, and then the scrum rooms. And so, what I really liked when I first actually uh, came to Bamberger was seeing that they had scrum rooms that are dedicated to the scrum teams. What, what is a scrum room? So a scrum room is a room that can be booked by anyone else for meeting room, and it's dedicated to one team that can use it for their meetings, for their um, sessions where they're they're you know brainstorming and doing things like that. Especially you know every day we have a daily, and so that happens of course in that that room. Okay. Um, and the nice thing is you know you know, you oftentimes are creating plans and working on things, and you can hang that up in the room. It's always there. It doesn't go away. Like if you went to a meeting room, you'd have to take it down and put it somewhere else. So you have like um, your own designated room. You just have your for own designated. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. And so I think this idea is certainly um, um, you know going with the Agile movement, and I think it's a, it's a really great thing that they, they started. Hopefully in the Orange Campus will also be there. I don't know how exactly the plans are, but yeah. I think um, certainly we've uh, had a lot of whispers about Bamberger Strong. We're trying new things there to then incorporate into the Orange Campus. So 100% I'm sure you'll have more scrum rooms, more spaces, and hopefully, um, yeah, more interaction with, with the environment around you. Yeah. You're, you're really living and breathing Agile methodologies and, and I think we're getting there, definitely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's great to hear. I, I guess last question for me, Grace, is GFK from when you joined to GFK now, how, how do you sum that up? So in the beginning when I joined, I had a lot going on. I was, you know, joining... Um, with two new teams and um, as a full-time Scrum Master and then uh, going right into these PI planning events which are like very, very intense two to three days of planning. Um, but I now feel like I, I fit in this framework that I know a lot of people now, I know the teams better. Um, I feel like the the JFK around this, this, this what I know, has been become a little more stable. Um, certainly last year was pretty um, eventful um, and there were you know downsides to that as well um, what I think for this year is that um, it's hopefully the year that things are stabilizing a bit better we're starting to work on some of the issues that we have and, and improving communication improving um, working processes that um, we really can grow and I definitely think there's there's um, potential for us to to change for the better this year and really have positive outcomes. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, Grace, I know there's probably a couple of scrum teams or a couple of data scientists waiting <laughs> for you to help lead the way. Yeah. So I won't hold you any longer, but really thank you for your time. It was really insightful and really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Sure. Grace. Thanks. For Cheers. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. For our latest content, please click here. For our social media channels, here. And please like, comment and subscribe below. See you in the next video.